Hi guys, welcome to another Classicals YouTube video. I'm also going to put this one on Instagram because I feel like it's good content and I'd like everyone to have a look at it. Today I'm going to take you through things I love about the Burnett 38. This is the top of the, run, top of the line machine on the B3 series. So you've got the 33, 35, then you've got 37, 38. So of course as the number goes up, uh, the machine has more features. Uh, of course, the price also goes up a little bit, but this one, from all the four Burnett 3 series, it's the most popular one. And when you really think about it, there are some very good reasons as to why it's so good. So today I'm going to list about three to four features that I personally think makes it a very, very good machine. And if you're out there looking for a sewing machine and are contemplating the 38, I hope this video kind of helps you you know, cross the fence and feel that this one's a good, like, you know, purchase for you and good machine for you to have. So the first thing that I really like is the extension table. For most machines, the 37 included as well, the Burnett 37, even in other brands, I find that extension tables are a, not an included accessory, but it's a optional accessory for you to purchase and almost every single person who likes to sew they really like to have something to start with to manage any kind of project bulk so a lot of people end up buying this as a separate accessory but this machine actually comes with it as an included accessory i just thought that makes it a really nice um feature to talk about uh, and you just kind of like remove this, which is a very good place for you to put all your accessories, your extra bobbins, your feet, and then you just slide it in. It's not a small extension table by any means, it's actually really quite spacious. And I think that for me, this is like definitely something that even if I was not buying a 38 and I was buying another machine, I would check whether this it comes with an extension table or not. And it would be like a very prime factor for me to decide whether I want a machine or I don't want a machine. The space is something that makes sewing so much easier, so don't just ignore that. And the second thing that I really liked about it was the amount of stitch options that you actually have on this. So if you look at the very first page, it's utility stitches. And utility stitches are all the stitches that you're going to be using to kind of stitch functionally. So your straight stitch, your edge stitches, your you know your overlock stitches you've even got this one which I think is which has been recommended as really good finishing stitch for jersey fabrics so you've got all these really really good all different kinds of buttonholes so utility stitches are not fancy stitches they're not pretty stitches but they're going to be so useful for you to stitch absolutely anything and I think this is one of the reasons this machine is a bestseller a lot of people think about you know when I want to buy a machine how many stitches does it have Always look at how many utility stitches it does have because this is what you're going to use to stitch products of function. The decorative stitches, of course, you can find more. So with all the utility, the letter stitches and the decorative stitches, it has about 395 stitches. But know that without this, your machine is not functional. So you don't want to just think about, oh, you know, does it sew hearts? Think about will we be able to do some finishing stitches as well. Because you can start off using a machine with finishing stitches without having to buy an overlocker and as you get more acquainted with sewing machines and stitch more you can always buy a different machine to do that so yeah I'm gonna use this moment to show maybe one or two other things from the functionality and stitch perspective on this machine so as always I'll pick a cotton fabric and I'm this time putting a stabilizer underneath this Oops. so I'll be putting a stabilizer uh, it only because I don't want it to pucker. And I wanted to show you guys very quickly from the utility stitch perspective. If you look over here, it says, it says stitch number two is the edge stitch. So on mode one, sorry, mode two, so let me just change the mode. And I do stitch number two, so I do zero, two. I have an edge stitch. And if you notice that the machine has swung the needle to one side, if you can see that. And uh, that's really useful to do edge stitches. But if you want to tweak a little bit on how much to the right or the left you want to move the needle, 
You can come back to mode one and do on a normal stitch. Oopsie. I managed to do them. Zero, one. <laughs> right? I can play with the, the zigzag element and that kind of, if you can look over here. Oops. If you look over here as I play with the zigzag button and you look here, I'm actually manipulating needle position. I just think that's a very, very nice feature to have because whenever you're stitching projects and you want to do a stitch close to the edge and it's very popularly used in many machines it's nice to have a feature for you to move the needle by a millimeter on each side and it's a seven millimeter stitch width so you can go around three positions on either side so three to the right three to the right three to the left and then you have the center position so that's really really nice way to manipulate uh, somebody in our other YouTube channel asked, uh, asked us about stitch uh, speed and how to control that for a lower brunette model like the Academy. Now, of course, when you push the foot pedal, if you're on the low, slowest speed, no matter how much you push into the pedal, it's going to always be quite slow. Now, this is a feature that comes in with the Brunina. I have to actually check if it comes with the higher end brunette machines, but as for the 3 Series, this doesn't happen. But you've got option to slide and you can go from pretty slow to like pretty fast which I think is pretty cool as well so those are the two things so far the extension table and the utility stitches and the ability to play around a little bit with the needle position what I also think I really like about this machine which I think is something that I would recommend anybody if you've got budget for it go for it is to have these two buttons as automatic buttons on your machine I don't like to use the handle to bring my needle up I think it's ridiculous like when you've got a push of a button to do that and also manipulate so as I stitch I can manipulate that needle up and down button I really like that feature and I don't know I feel like using the hand wheel is very old school so if you can get a machine with an automatic up down button needle great and this one is like another one I mean honestly I'm just like not a big fan of dragging and cutting on the side but I really like automatic buttons over there yes you can do a automatic start and stop you have to disengage the foot and then you can press and the machine will then just stitch by itself to the speed that you set it in but let's be really honest all of us really like to use the foot pedal so I don't think that's a wow feature I just think it's nice to know that in case your foot pedal is broken or you've forgotten it somewhere you're not going to stop you know stitching note that once you have the foot pedal plugged in you cannot use this button so every time the machine doesn't accept something it makes that noise as in you're not doing something correct so it also can sort of like guide you a little bit so yeah I didn't want to keep this one very long for me it was just about what I really really like about the Bennett 38 so it's the space it's the stitch variety and it's the automatic buttons and I think for the price point that it is it is a very sturdy machine I know a lot of people who are quilt makers who are dress makers who are fashion students they absolutely use this a lot especially when they're starting out and once they're more serious and they really are like used to sewing then they start getting like bananas or definitely higher end models the thing with sewing is like any other hobby is the more you do the more you know that you can do better with your machine choice so I would always recommend start with something that's nice reliable easy to use and can help you stitch a lot of different projects which means you have to look at utility stitches and then it's exciting enough for you to make a lot of projects and you get more interested in your hobby and then from there you level up i hope this helps you guys and if you find our videos useful please do subscribe to our channel uh we are focusing on putting so much more out there so also let me know what you want to see and hopefully i'll make that happen thank you so much